it was it was jovial. Uh, uh, you know, he was kind of right. When I get down there, I'll be talking to you, and I want this and I want that. So make sure they got this on. And uh, even though the bomb suit at, at the time in '84 was was a, a good bomb suit, it's evolved since then. Obviously, um, we used to get pieces of four-inch black masking tape or black nasty. And uh, he'd say, right, I want some on my shoulder joints and on my leg joints. And I'm like, what's, what's this for? Isn't the suit fitting right? He said, no, he, he said, it'll help keep my arms and legs on in case the bomb goes off. So that was the kind of banter um, that, that we had. Um, it would then change. You could notice a change if it was a really big device, you know, a couple of... Uh, milk churns or beer kegs full of homemade explosives shoved under a, a drain under the road on, in, in a culvert he'd come back and he'd go okay right it's a big one so we're going to do it like this or we're going to do it like that and generally it involved uh, him x-raying the device if it was safe to move we'd tie a rope to it and then we'd all pull it and move it uh, and that more often than not um Worked, worked well. <clears throat> I was always at the front because I was the biggest, uh, which was, uh, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, and uh, a, a couple of times the device, the device actually went off when we were pulling it. But it was out of the culvert, it didn't damage the property, you know, uh, the locals st could still use the, the, the road, etc. But we were a little bit shell-shocked shell because sometimes we were like 50 metres away from it. Um, so, but you just get up laughing, sort of ringing in your ears and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, my admiration for those guys, you know, has, has never waned uh, at all, at all. It was massively difficult for you and your army family, but what about your friends and family at home? How often did you reassure them that you were still okay? Um, most, most nights. I'd, take a walk down to the, uh, to the phone box and if something big had happened in my area, I'd, uh, I'd tell my mum and say, look, you know, you'll, you might see something on the news tonight, uh, but don't worry, you know, everything's okay, I'm, I'm all right. If there were, was any incidents in the, in the province, then I'd make sure that I phoned home. Uh, my girlfriend at the time, she would go round to my mum and dad's once a week and I'd have a, you know, a, a chat with her. Um, it was them old days with the uh, two pences in the phone. Don't get that now, do we? Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I tried to reassure them. I was very aware. And my, and my dad would say to me, he said, you know, because you, your mum's, she's worried sick. She's not sleeping. I was full of, you know, you know I'm all right. Don't worry, mummy, it'll be okay. You know, I'm safe. Whenever we went anywhere in the vehicles, we were always... Um, protected, either the police would escort us or the infantry regiment would escort us. Uh, we'd have these uh, tran full transit vans full of equipment with a very light armour on it um, with blue flashing lights and two-tone sirens. So what 19-year-old doesn't want to tear down a road following the white line, uh, following a police car, well, trying to keep up with the police car, uh, driving a big van, um, you know, going to save life and property so it was um that's what we told ourselves and that's what we talked about um but yeah it was um it was it it, it changed a few things for me the british troops were far from popular in northern ireland what was it like working there and interacting with the local community mainly uh, the interaction that we got with locals were with the ulster defense regiment uh, soldiers uh, boys and girls uh, and the uh, Royal Ulster Constabulary so if we went for we were allowed two pints of beer uh, a night we'd go to their social bar um, or stay on barracks and go to the NAFI and it was the uh, first battalion of the Queen's Regiment at the time but we were separate from them because we had our, a different role to perform than them um, out when we were out working, as I said before, the the police or the arm, the rest of the army, the local regiment would form a protective cordon around us, 
and we could see them you know quite a distance away so they cleared the area and they were watching to make sure um, that we weren't under any threat most of the work we did was right on the border itself um, and sometimes we'd go and look at a device that was under a culvert under a road and the rural engineer search teams these guys would go out with the metal detectors they would find the wire and it would go all the way down to a stream or a little track and then off the other side but that was the republic of ireland um, so they would be sat on a hill with binoculars uh, watching us really and we'd be going about our job and doing our duty and we knew that we were a, a high profile target for the ira inla because if they could get a, a bomb disposal team you know it would it would be a big big win for them so there were all sorts of electronic countermeasures kit that we had with us that would stop remote control uh, detonations you're driving through towns you might get a few bricks thrown at you people spitting at you um, the windows on our vehicle didn't wind up and down uh, it was all protected by this uh, um, plastic very light armor um, and the public weren't really allowed close to us so we were lucky in that aspect not like the lads who had to you know go riot control patrol the streets um, I admire all of those one of my friends from Newquay veterans um, he suffers quite badly from his experiences out on the patrol and I, I just can't comprehend it yet yeah, he'll say the same about the role that I did um, so we were lucky we were shielded shall I say uh, from the local population but then we get thumbs up and cheers and the Union Jack waved at us driving through one town and then the complete opposite driving through a different town depending what the religious or political majority was in that in that area that must have really impacted your state of mind and the role that you'd fulfilled um, have you ever experienced any PTSD I don't think so um, I have uh, I've times when I find it difficult to sleep sometimes because I'm reliving something at a particular time of year but it 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 doesn't particularly I don't think it's particularly affected me that much though if I was ever to speak to a professional they'd probably dig deep enough and find something but I have friends who have PTSD and listening to their symptoms and what they have to go through to deal with it, then I am absolutely one of the lucky ones who, you know, I, maybe I've got away with it or maybe I just, it's so slight, I just deal with it differently. Do you think we talk about that enough? Is there enough support out there? There certainly is now. In my day, when I came back from Northern Ireland, it was, welcome back, did you have a good tour? Yes, I did. Okay, get in that shed and sort that vehicle out. You know, do, it was that, really. Um, and, you know, get back to playing rugby in the same. And even in 95, when I came back from my tour in uh, um, the Balkans in, in Bosnia, um, there was mention that there is a, a psychiatric nurse if you want help and that was it and that was mentioned to the whole regiment you know boys girls middle-aged men I was 30 at the time you know officers everybody and it was just sort of mentioned as a list of things that they had to talk to us about uh, and that was it things have changed the veterans suicide rate for this year I remember hearing that numbers like 36 for this year um, and maybe the COVID, the COVID lockdown has attributed to that but last year it was still quite a high figure um, so a lot more is being done but certainly not enough 
not enough for veterans. Especially the blokes, because we all think we're big macho, tough men. Um, and it's hard to, to just pick up the phone and speak to somebody. And it's hard to take that step forward. And I've got friends, you know, who, who've been through that. And they're now getting help. And they're like, oh, I just so wish I'd done it earlier.